What's up guys, Nolan here, and today we're going to be talking about the biggest advantages that you can have in Escape from Tarkov. Now these are going to be different depending on the age of the wipe between the early, the mid, and the late game, and of course with the wipe coming soon TM, we'll talk the early game. I personally consider the early game up until level 15 on your PMC. This is going to allow you to unlock most of the traders to level 2. The first and most important advantage is map knowledge. If you've never played on a map, now is the time to learn them. I suggest playing the map a couple times first, then check out my 5 minute map guide on it. You will understand the scope of the map and the extracts at this point. Knowing the best loot locations is difficult to teach in 5 minutes, but I have recently started using the Map Genie maps, and they are the best out there in my opinion. You're going to be able to see and look at whatever you want, as the maps are completely interactable and you can change whatever you would like. They are truly just the best maps out there right now. The second biggest advantage that you can have is information itself. If you have a question about the game, make sure to check out the EFT wiki as well as my EFT like a pro playlist, which is full of tutorials for new and old players alike. The easiest in-game advantage to accomplish is the shotgun and more specifically the semi-auto shotguns. I absolutely guarantee there's going to be an uproar of people screaming to nerf shotguns after the wipe because it has happened in every single wipe since the beginning. Combine a very cheap weapon system that can easily drop unarmored targets in 1-3 to three shots with the vast majority of the community running around unarmored and you have the most efficient advantage on day 1 you can get. To get access to shotguns, use your scav as much as possible, check fence when you can for the people who lack the critical info and sell them on there, also be on the lookout for them on the scavs that you kill of course. The next easiest is long range optics, with mostly the PSO from Prapper, but you'll need a weapon with a dovetail mount for it. This is namely going to be the AKs and the OP SKSs. However, these are very easy to come by in the early game. Other than the PSO, you're going to need to get lucky with some scav kills, but they can easily be found on raiders, bodyguards, and bosses. Armor piercing ammo is of course an advantage, but you'll need to work for the good stuff. At level 10 PMC and level 2 Peacekeeper, you have my personal favorite early game round, the 308 M80 ammunition. However, you don't have easy access to the 308 guns unless you've saved some while leveling. Sturman and his guards regularly pack 7N1 from Mosins and M61 308 rounds with their Vepper Hunters. Early game, I would use M80 over M61 though for the one-shot potential. Farming reserve will get you loads of 545 BT, sometimes BS, but if you farm Killa, you will not be hurting for 545 AP ammo because he will pack loads of 7N39 with his RPKs. But you know, it's Killa. Not to mention looting him after the kill is a mini game on its own as players might be waiting for you to go loot then just kill you. Remember, you won't have your search skill anymore, so it will take a while for you to search through his inventory after the wipe. And the fight with Killa is like a massive dinner bell to any ballsy player on the map. If you want to go the rat route, search all of the weapon crates and hidden stashes that you can, but that can really go for anything on this list, so I'm not going to continue to talk about that. Face shields are going to be huge because all of the pistolings running around. The easiest way to scoop up a bunch is Rashala's bodyguards, but be careful not to shoot them in the head or else you'll crack the face shield that you want. The hardest way is Gluhar and his bodyguards as some of them are late game geared up and very difficult to farm. The raiders on reserve are also easy access, but also equally difficult. If you bring a few friends with some Mosins or high fire rate submachine guns, you might be able to snag a few. Again, just be sure not to shoot them in the face. If you want to buy them, do not buy them from the flea market when you reach level 10 because they'll be expensive and practically guaranteed to have a big crack in them, and this is unless you like to live dangerously and have the money to blow on it. At Ragman level 2, you'll be able to buy the Kiver for what that's worth. It may be the worst level 3 face shield helmet, but it's a face shield helmet with a level 3 high ricochet chance shield, and that's exactly what you want. The fast visors that you can also get are mediocre at best, but it's better than nothing if you want to be able to hear well and the cash to blow. You'll be able to barter two pieces of plexiglass for new shields at PMC level 15, Ragman level 2 for those ZSH helmets bodyguards and raiders like to wear. So you do have options if you do accidentally shoot them in the face. Grenades are surprisingly easy to come by in the early days, but by looting and bartering. Once you hit level 10, you can get M67s from Peacekeeper, but until then, the barters for Zibos to Peacekeeper for M67s, and the most efficient being Fuses to Mechanic at level 1, and the Vogs is very useful. The reason why the Vog barter on Mechanic is so efficient is because you can go farm grenade boxes and find loads of fuses on top of actual grenades. Again, Raiders and bodyguards love their nades too. An honorable mention here because it's going to be more difficult for standard account users is the docs case barter at level 2 therapist. 
Being able to store a bunch of keys, money, dog tags, and other stuff safely away in your container is a massive advantage. Otherwise, they'll be found in marked rooms mostly, which you'll be pretty lucky if you come across one of those randomly in the early game, and they aren't efficient to farm unless you have mid-game gear because of the player threats and a big backpack. But of course, you do what you want, you can go for it if you would like. Next is useful armor. Level 10 PMC with level 2 Peacekeeper will get you access to level 3 armor. Level 15 PMC and level 2 Ragman will get you access to basic level 4 and efficiently repaired level 3 armor. Before then, you can barter soap and toilet paper for a level 4 armored rig with Ragman. Or again, you can farm scavs, bodyguards, raiders, and bosses. And especially with the bodyguards, raiders, and bosses, that can go all the way up to level 6. Meds are pretty easily available Available and even more so now with the after raid healing. What isn't easily available is surgery kits. Once you hit level 10 and move through his intro tasks to unlock Jaeger, he'll have a CMS kit barter for three nipper pliers. You're gonna find these nipper pliers around in hardware spawns and toolboxes. Just keep that in mind as you're leveling up to hold on to those if you can in order to save up for this barter. At level 15 PMC and Jaeger level 2, you'll be able to straight up just buy them as well. The only thing here is that you will need to do some of his tasks in order to get him to level 2. BSG have said that they're nerfing his tasks and gonna be changing several in general, so we'll have to wait and see what is changed after the wipe. The last thing here is gonna be your hideout, which for some reason I don't understand why most people aren't interested in doing their hideout so I'm gonna leave it out of this video not to mention I've already done a specific video on the early game hideout on its own so if you're interested in that I'm gonna leave the link for that in the description whether you are racing to get the best gear as quick as possible or just having fun with it all of these early game advantages will be massive when used correctly I wish you good fortune in the wars to come if you want to learn anything about escape from Tarkov or its development then you can check out my playlist for it here if you like this video then you know the drill I really appreciate the people who do otherwise I hope you at least learn something and I also hope you have a nice day see you guys